Today we're going to be talking about the blazer component lifecycle, knowing about each of the events that occur and where to put your code, when to use each one is critical to ensuring that your pages and your components are loading as fast as possible. Um, we're going to speak about some of the common pitfalls and um, if you're using .NET 8, I will be sharing with you a feature that gets turned on by default, which if you don't know about, will keep your pages loading slow. So I'm gonna show you where to turn that off. So every Blazor page goes through four different events. The .NET team has conveniently given us an easy way to add our own code to each of these events by overriding those events. So the first stage is the initialization and creation. Here the page gets initialized. To add your own code, you would override the uninitialized the most important thing to know about this stage is that the code only runs once. The second stage is where the parameters of a component get set. To add code here, you're going to override the on parameters set event, and this will get called every single time the parameter gets set in a component. The third stage is rendering. So this is where a component is rendered, and by that the HTML for the component or page actually gets generated and presented to the user. To add code to this event, we would override the on after render event. This event fires every time a component needs to be redrawn. And if we need to know if it's the first time it's being rendered, .NET gives us an easy way to do that. Final stage is the disposal stage. This is where .NET destroys the component and then frees up any resources that were used in the creation and processing of the component. This is the one event where you can't actually write code for. This is because the, the component is on its way out. It doesn't really exist at the time the event occurs. So what code do we write in each of the different stages or any? Well, like in all programming situations, it depends. But here's a few basic pointers to get you going. Longer running code like API calls or database calls should ideally be placed in the first stage on initialized event. This is because this code only gets executed once. Unless your API call, your database call is gonna depend on the value of a parameter that is being passed into your component. If that's the case, you need to make sure your call happens in the second stage, so on parameter set. You need to be very aware that this is going to be called every time the parameter changes or the parameter is updated. If you put the code in the on after render, every time your component is going to be re-rendered, it will make that database call again. So be very wary that your long running call could potentially be called multiple times unnecessarily. This is one of the biggest hindrance of slow running pages. When writing code in the on after render, you should ideally be checking the is first render variable to ensure whether the this is the first time your component is being rendered. This is an easy way to check that your code isn't unnecessarily being called multiple times. Components are the building blocks of any Blazor application. Components will frequently have child components and their components will also have child components. So how does the life cycle of a component affect its parent component? The easiest way to illustrate that is in some codes. Let's take a quick look at some sample code to show how the life cycle events occur in, in real life. So here we are in Visual Studio. I have a simple application here with just two components. I have a single page that has a child component here in the browser. We just got a bit of a display so it's easy to see where the parent component page is. And here is the child's component. All we have is a button that passes through a parameter to the child's component and then writes a little bit of a string message showing how many times the button has been clicked. Then we are overriding each of the page events and we are writing an output message to the debug window. This just helps us see when and in what order things occur. All right, and then in the child component itself, very much the same thing. The child component has a single parameter that lets that can be can be set from the outside. And once again, here we are overriding each of the events and writing a message to the debug window so that we can see um, how they occur. So let's go and refresh this page, and then we'll see in the output window what we see. So, so the first thing that happens is our parent com our parent components is initialized, our parent component has its parameters set, then we have the child component being initialized and its parameters are set for the child component, then the page or, or the parent component finishes its rendering, so we get the on after render, with the value of first render being true, 
then the child component on after render fires with the first render being true. So pretty straightforward. Soon as we hit the button, let's see what happens. We have a couple more events. The on parameter set is fired for the child component because clicking that button, we will actually set the value of this parameter. And um, then we get the on after render of the parent component and then the child component on after render occurs as well. Notice that both of these first renders are now set to false. What's important to notice here is that the on initialize does not get called a second time either for the parent component or the child component and the on parameter set gets multiple gets set called multiple times as well as the on after render so if we click this multiple times you'll see the on parameter set for the child component continuously gets called every time we uh, call the component so if you have any long running code try and keep it out of there because it will be called multiple times and it can have devastating effects on your performance. So today we've only spoken about the synchronous version of each of these. There is asynchronous versions of each one of these, but the principle still applies. You can override those ones in the same way you can override the synchronous versions. So if you're using .NET 8 or thinking about moving to .NET 8 shortly, you may want to know that there is a setting that is turned on by default that causes components to be pre-rendered in the sense that components will be rendered twice. This is an attempt to improve search engine optimization so that um, SEO can discover components more quickly before they are fully rendered. This slows things down again if you I find it better for the sort of code I'm writing to turn that off. So I'm now using .NET 8 with the same application. If I go and do a refresh on this, you will see now that the order in which this loads is we have an on initialized for the parent component parameter set for the parent and on initialized for the child parameter set then a secondary on initialized um, for the parent component and a secondary initialized on initialized event that happens for the child component. So once again, if you've got long running code in each of these and you don't know about the setting, your long running code is going to run twice for every single component you have. So there's a simple way to turn this off um, and you can turn this off at multiple levels but effectively what you want to do is you can actually set the render mode for individual components or globally what, setting it here in the roots uh, portion will set this pretty much globally for the application and all you're doing is you're setting the render mode and you set the interactive server render mode and you turn pre-render is is false if we do this again now so this will ensure it runs in the normal state where each component is only initialized the first time that's all i have for blazor component lifecycle events thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video